Welcome, in this video we will discuss the paper called Earnings Management to Avoid Earnings Decreases and Losses, published by Bergstaller and Dichef in 1997. Let's first look at a real life example in the Dunder Mufflin paper company. This is Michael, its CEO. This is Stanley, Michael's accountant. He's got some bad news. He reports to his boss that the company made their first small loss in years. Now, this is Michael's reaction. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 So, what explains Michael's reaction? Much anecdotal evidence suggests that managers try to have increasing earnings. Managers find it important to present better earnings than last year in the annual report. Also, researchers offer systematic evidence of incentives to maintain consistent increases in earnings. One possibility to get rid of unsatisfactory figures is earnings management. Earnings management and accounting is the act of intentionally influencing the process of financial reporting to obtain some private gain. Bergstaller and Dichev investigate in their research whether, how and why firms manage earnings to avoid reporting earnings decreases and losses. They investigated the existence and prevalence of earnings management by doing both statistical and graphical tests. They assert that if there was no earnings management then earnings are expected to be normally distributed like this. However, after using thousands of observations over a long period of time, the graph showed something peculiar. Notice the gap just before and just after zero. This doesn't seem right. There are more increases and less decreases in earnings than expected. In fact, 8 to 12 percent of firms with small decreases manage their earnings to get an increasing number. The same story goes for earnings in general. Managers avoid having small losses. 30 to 44 percent of firms manage earnings to convert small losses into a small profit. Furthermore, they notice that when firms have a better enough consistent earnings growth, they are more inclined to manage earnings to avoid breaking it. So, firms do manage earnings. But how do they do this? By observing the accounting numbers of the earnings managing firms, they found that both cash flow from operations and changes in working capital are frequently used to manage earnings. But what's the reason that managers manage those earnings? According to Bergstaller and Dichev, the motivation of earnings management is explained through two different theories. The transaction cost theory and the prospect theory. Transaction cost theory says that firms with higher reported earnings will benefit from more favorable terms of transactions with stakeholders. In other words, firms with higher earnings will face lower transaction costs. The prospect theory argues that the value function of decision makers is steepest around the reference point. This means that a change in earnings around zero has significant value for stakeholders. Now back to the Dunder Mifflin paper company. Stanley has read the paper and come up with an idea to overcome their small loss. This is Michael's reaction. We hope you now understand the frequency, the methods and the reasons why firms engage in earnings management. We leave you with this totally inappropriate quote by Sophocles and hope you liked this video.